chance of getting into remission with taking the pills. The problem is the remission rate is 30 to 50% of patients, so there's still a lot of patients after a year and a half of the medications to slow down the thyroid for the overactive condition that still will need some, either need to continue those pills longer or might need to go to the radioiodine, and again, less likely the thyroid surgery unless something special is going on. Okay, wonderful. All right, well, thank you for clearing that up. Um, that does make, make a lot of sense. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to have a word from one of our sponsors, about 32 seconds if you want to grab some water or whatever, and we're going to hear from uh, per- Perfect Health Consulting Services, and we'll be right back after this message. So don't go away. Stay tuned, everyone. We'll be right back. Do you suffer from allergies, depression, arthritis, headaches, diabetes, and hair loss? If so, these symptoms could indicate a mineral imbalance or toxicity. Kristen Harper, certified nutrition consultant, speaker, and founder of Perfect Health Consulting Services, holds the key to your health and vitality. Hair analysis provides information from where problems begin. Order your personal hair analysis at Perfect Health Consulting Services. Welcome back. You are listening to Partners in Health and Biz on the PIH Radio Network. I'm your host, Gail Dixon McBride. Actually, I had that McBride part, just got married. And we are broadcasting live from our Columbia studio. My special guest, once again, is Dr. Victor Burnett, MD medical doctor, and he is here. He is the chair of the Division of Endocrinology at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, and chief operating officer of the American Thyroid Association. Our topic and discussion this morning is centered around the various types of thyroid conditions and diseases and how to avoid getting the disease or cancer. So before we went to our commercial, we were discussing hypo thyroidism, hypothyroidism, and uh, underactive and overactive thyroid. And uh, also we talked about uh, Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's. (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) Dr. Burnett, what what is a thyroid nodule and how are they found? That's another. Sure, Gail. So these, uh, it's interesting, but a lot of our organs in our body will make little cysts and nodules. Um, I try to give the comparison uh, to what when we have molds on our skin. I think most of us have freckles and molds on our skin, and it looks a little bit different than your normal skin. And, uh, you know, a doctor will look at it and say, oh, yeah, it looks like, a, you know, an unconcerning mole. And then, oh, well, that one, you know, maybe we should check that one out. And, oh, that one doesn't look good. We should check it out. But it, it's skin tissue. It's just a little bit different than your normal skin. So the thyroid can develop little nodules and cysts, so cysts are fluid-filled uh, areas, and pure cysts aren't worrisome at all. And most nodules, 95% of thyroid nodules are benign, meaning they're not cancer. But there is a propensity uh, for the thyroid to get these low-grade, typically low-grade cancers, uh, and so one has to evaluate a nodule, and so there are guidelines from like the American Thyroid Association uh, that we publish for uh, physicians uh, and uh, nurse practitioners, PAs, to use when they take care of patients. Uh, And it kind of gives a guidance and says, well, if this nodule is a certain size or certain appearance, then it should undergo what we call a fine needle aspiration, which is like a biopsy. It's using a very thin needle, and we take a sample from the nodule using ultrasound to guide the needle into the nodule. And then a pathologist or cytopathologist uh, reads the slides and says, yeah, this looks like benign material, and then we can follow the nodules. And if it's something more concerning, then then sometimes it precipitates surgery because we have a concern it could be thyroid cancer. But so most thyroid nodules are benign, but they're very prevalent. We believe about 50% of the population has thyroid nodules, although many of them don't need to be uh, addressed. And actually, just to comment, um, in South Korea, they started saying, well, we should just do thyroid ultrasound in everyone as a precautionary thing. And it led to uh, an explosion in the diagnosis of thyroid cancer. But 
it was um, clinically small cancers that actually, and I know this sounds a little weird, but was not going to threaten the patient's life and cause more harm than good, and they've actually given up on that program because it was causing more problems for patients. Mm -hmm. uh, so screening is not, thyroid ultrasound screening is not recommended uh, per se unless you have an extremely strong family history or, again, uh, you know, physical exam, something's wrong, and then your doctor says, yeah, I feel a lump. Okay, we want to follow that up. Or more commonly, people have a imaging because they have neck pain or they hurt their shoulder or their upper chest. They've been having symptoms in their lungs, and they get a CT or MRI, and lo and behold, they incidentally find thyroid nodules, and then uh, they usually get sent to the physician a lot of times, an endocrinologist uh, who will evaluate their thyroid nodules. Oh, okay. Now, um, question. So many times, uh, most of the time when I hear people talk about the thyroid, uh, it's usually something, some type of condition um, that women have. Is does Do men have a thyroid gland? <laughs> yes, they, they have a thyroid gland. But it's, you bring up an interesting uh, issue. So autoimmune disorders in general – because uh, they're, they're things that are in rheumatology, other, other fields of medicine, specialties of medicine, women tend to have a propensity to develop uh, autoimmune conditions more so than men. But having said that, uh, we definitely have men who get overactive and underactive thyroids and thyroid cancers, but when you look at the numbers, a lot of times when you look at it, it's three or four women uh, to every man. So it's, it's you know, much more common in, uh, in women, by and large, the, the underactive, the overactive. Uh, of course, uh, something like postpartum thyroiditis, a man really couldn't get because he can't get pregnant. And uh, <laughs> then uh, the thyroid cancer, yeah, a little bit more of a predisposition for women to have it. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, now, this is another uh, common question, and, and if any of my listeners want to call in, you need to call in right now. The call-in number, if you have a question for Dr. Burnett, is 347-945-7433. I know we're, we're zoom, zooming through these, and uh, Dr. Burnett is answering a lot of questions and giving us so much really great information uh, but, you know, you have to call in now if you want to get your question in. Um, so, Dr. Burnett, um, this is another thing. A lot of women that uh, have hair loss sometimes wonder if that can be a symptom of thyroid disease or th some type of thyroid problem. Is is that one of the symptoms, and can you go through, through those symptoms that uh, sure. sometimes occur? So definitely uh, both an underactive and an overactive thyroid can lead to some changes in hair. And hair growth is a funny thing because it takes several cycles to stabilize hair once there's been a change. So say someone develops an underactive thyroid, they get diagnosed, they get treated, uh, it can take six, eight months until they feel like their hair settles down from where it was uh, after starting therapy, but usually it should settle down. Now, one thing I do encounter is um, that uh, it's not well, I think, understood by the general population that your hair doesn't stay the same your whole life. Uh, you know, I think men know this very well because I know my hair doesn't look like what I was 20. But ladies are thinking that their hair is going to be nice and full their whole life. And unfortunately, what the, the truth of the matter is, as you age, your hair tends to thin and such. And so sometimes we have patients come in and they're worried it's their thyroid. And in reality, their thyroid levels look fine. So while the thyroid definitely does this and it can have significant impacts and treatment usually helps, uh, we always need to keep our mind open to what other things could be going on. You know, are they having a well-rounded diet? What are their stress? Uh, there are other endocrine conditions that, uh, like excess testosterone levels, stuff like that, that can cause mm. excessive hair growth and scalp hair loss. So we try to broaden uh, the, uh, the thought process if people have hair complaints because it, 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 it may be their thyroid, but it could be something else. Mm, yeah, I guess that there are a lot of tests that have to be um, made in order to diagno diagnose that. Um, and like you said, it could be lots of other things that could be going on besides thyroid condition. Um, yep. <laughs> what about uh, supplements? 
should should I or should my listeners be taking uh, any type of supplements to for the thyroid to enhance its function? Is that something that we should be doing on a daily basis? That's a great question. So I would say it's important to have uh, enough iodine in your diet, and most people in the U.S. do. And I would suggest getting it through your diet is probably the number one way to do that. And we definitely know in countries where there's iodine deficiency, you can get enlarged thyroid, so goiters, and you can get different issues with function. And actually, a chronic low iodine state, those countries have a higher thyroid cancer risk and such. But what's not been proven is, and when you look on the market, there are like iodine supplements that have tremendously more iodine than the body needs per day. So this, the iodine, if you're going to take something, I would make sure it's in the form of a regular multivitamin because it, many of the dedicated just iodine pills have an, or drops have an enormous amount of iodine in them. Then the other thing I'd like to comment on, because I did some research on this, I had a handful of patients uh, uh, come to me that had weird thyroid function tests, and we couldn't explain them initially. Then we talked a little bit more, uh, and we had already asked them about their medications, but they had failed to share that they were on some supplements. And so when we checked the the supplements uh, that they were taking, once they had mentioned them, we sent some of them off for analysis, and they actually had active thyroid hormone in them, which is a prescription. And oh this goodness. led to us to do a study where we got the 10 most popular products off the Internet search, tested them, and 9 out of 10 actually had thyroid hormone in them, and they mm-hmm. caused problems. And some of them had mm-hmm. as much or more thyroid hormone than one might prescribe. So uh, it's hard when 90% of them had some sort of uh T4, T3 that they weren't supposed to have to recommend supplements. I recommend a well-rounded diet, uh, multivitamin with a little iron is a very reasonable thing to do, but I would not recommend any specific supplements for the thyroid because there's just data lacking that it helps. And there is data that some of these unregulated supplements uh, can actually cause harm. So were these thyroid supplements or were they just multivitamins that had... uh thyroid hormones in the vitamin in the multivitamin yeah no they were called they were kind of marketed under thyroid support make your thyroid oh, work better so oh. they were specific to the thyroid oh, and okay. uh, again we we published this in the, uh, the journal thyroid uh, which is actually the name of a journal that the american thyroid association uh, uh publishes uh, with Marianne Liebert and uh, yeah and we uh, publish this and it's been interesting and we're not the only ones who have found stuff in certain supplements there's other supplements that have had steroids and stuff in it so I would say it's buyer beware on the supplements because unfortunately the ways uh, the rules are the FDA can't is not allowed to actively uh, uh, look at these supplements they can only do something if there's a problem or somebody complains they developed an issue or if you know we do a report like we did and identify Identify, uh, you know, then they can take a more proactive look. But uh, the uh, Congress has a, a law that was made back in the 90s that kind of says supplements won't be regulated. Okay. Well, we're almost out of time, less than two minutes left, Dr. Burnett. Uh, could you quickly uh, let us know if there are any foods that we should or shouldn't avoid uh, to um, the, the specific foods and then uh, tell us a little more about your organization and how people can get in contact with you. Sure. As far as foods, again, a nice, healthy diet, of course, is important. Um, there's some stuff on the Internet, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower could potentially slow the thyroid. You would have to eat such an enormous amount of those foods that I don't <laughs> think anyone could get that amount in. Uh, if you had a, a, a thyroid that was about to fail and you had a healthy dosing of that, it might slow it down. But really, no, there's no particular foods other than, again, avoiding those supplements. And I have seen someone who ate high amounts of, like, herring fish, and he got a lot of iodine that way, but no. Okay. And as far okay. as the American Thyroid Association, we're very easy to find, and we do have patient-related information uh, at www.thyroid.org, uh, or you can put in ATA and thyroid, uh, and it will, um, you know, it will, when you do your search, pop up, and there's a patient section, and it talks about hypo, hyperthyroidism, thyroid nodules, thyroid cancers we have, over 20-some uh, topics, and uh, it's in English, and many of them are also available in Spanish. 
Wow, wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us uh, here on Partners in Health and Biz. This has been my pleasure. I certainly have been informed with all your information, value, knowledge and information, Dr. Burnett. Uh, we'll have to have you back on.